The Queensboro Tigers about to host the Holyoke Cougars. Out of region matchup, Holyoke is from Region 21 in Massachusetts. Cougars coming down from Massachusetts today. Holyoke, probably mainly known for being the birthplace of legendary sportscaster Jack Buck. Last year, new time for Holyoke, last year's best player Joe Lasella graduated. He was an All-American who scored 40 points, 15 goals and 10 assists in 11 games. But he's gone and it's a new look Cougar team. Any thoughts, Yemi, as the game's about to begin? A season about to begin? Um, I know this is going to be a better season for the Queen, Queensboro Tigers. Um, the team looks extremely good this year, and hopefully they have a great season, and we all hope for that. Season underway. Kyle Duquette is in the middle, number seven. Look at Duquette, who they just tried to get it to. He had 10 points last year, all assists, no goals. Liao, moving it ahead. What do you see here so far? Um, I think Queensboro's probably going to try to put more emphasis on on attacking, and we have a 4-4-3 formation from the Queensboro Tigers and I think we have a five I know I think we have a five four one formation from Olio Cougars. Now do you like those zone defenses? Um, the zone defenses are looking pretty good. Um, There's Duquette from Holyoke moving it ahead and then Tigers have it now. Liao up ahead Wide pass and Holyoke clears it <laughs> over the bench. And that's a throw to the Queensboro Tigers. The Holyoke Cougars get the ball. Back to the Queensboro Tigers. And back to the Holyoke Cougars. Chance here for the Tigers. Stumbled, nearly lost it, kicked back. Now just deciding to set it up again. Wise move. And that's out. Entering to the Leo Cougars. Cooper Marsh. Loses it. Back to the Tigers. Marsh up ahead. Tigers will have it back. It's Royal Stewart. Almost three minutes in, no score. Bring in, header. 50-50 ball. And coming in. Oh. The Almost first. a mistake there. That was the first goal attempt or shot and goal by any of the two teams. And that came from the Olio Cougars. And the Queensboro Tigers keep pushing forward. Mom would do with the ball, and that would be a goal kick to the Olio Cougars. And Sawane got behind the uh, Cougars, but couldn't get it. Olioke will have it, over three and a half minutes in.
see how far he could kick it. So, pretty deep kick, strong header. Going out, fighting by the bench, and saved in. The ball back to the Queensboro Tigers. Passes back to the goalie. I guess that's what happens at the beginning of the year, right? A little uh, out of sync. Ball out. Tigers. Trying to get it to Lobo. Couldn't get it to William Lobo, number 27. Zakaria Moose, number 14 for the Cougars right there. He's been right around the uh, action. Cooper Marsh. We have a knee injury. Can't tell who it is. I think it's... Uh, that was a wonderful show of fair play by the Oli, the Oli Oku. I believe it's Fu Ki Liao, a knee injury. Trainer coming out. Clock being stopped. Five minutes and 13 seconds in. No score so far. It's tough five minutes into the season and a knee injury. Both teams talking strategies during the break. Trying something to get the offenses started. A bit stagnant for each team so far, right, Yemi? What do you think they have to do to get it a little more going, more opportunities, shots on goal? Um, I see a very strong midfield from the Oli Oak Cougars. And once Queens, the Queensboro Tigers could get past the midfield, I think we're going to have a couple of goals. And there's already, there's already a very good show of defense from the Queensboro Tigers. Um, when you have a guy who's six foot four holding back your def holding down your defense, I think you have a pretty good chance at, not, at securing every goal from going in, from not going in. And you have a, very, a pretty good goalkeeper in the second season. And so I think the Queensboro Tigers have a very good defense. And the old Yo Cougars have a very good midfield, and once they could break, break through those two, I think we're going to have a pretty good, a pretty good game. Well, I'd say last year Queensborough had a number of low-scoring games, and it really just turned into, you know, one of those who's going to blink first games. <laughs> it's almost whoever gives, you know, yeah. who's going to make the big mistake. Well, I think this season shows a more promise for Queensborough because we see this a uh, young freshman players or in it to win it and this year you see most of these kids have experience from either their high school or from their own countries and these are kids who are here to win championships and not just to play games and hopefully just as we've seen in the first three minutes they're playing extremely hard we see this for the rest of the season. Play set to resume in a moment. And we have um, a substitution for the Queensboro Tigers. It's number 22, right? Amadola Popol. Comes in for number seven, Fukki Leo. Hopefully his knee is okay. And we hope to see him back in the next game. Right. Strong kick. I don't think he expected it. Patrick Cronin was the one, number 20 for Holyoke. Up ahead, and that's out. Cooper Marsh. Working it around. Popo loses it. Moose. Now up ahead. Scoring opportunity. Nope. Cleared out a bit. It's those 50-50 ones where either guy could get it and it really depends on which way it goes. And we have our first free kick issued by the referee. And goes to the Olia Cougars. Six minutes, 20 seconds in, no score. Now, do you think there are any plays set up, run out of these situations? 
Or at least how do you defend one of them? I think um, basically um, the goalkeeper is going to try to get it into the across the midfield and unfortunately the Queensboro Tigers got back the ball. Yeah, not unfortunate for Queensboro, but <laughs> probably not what they ran. The ball now is back to the Tigers. The Tigers Lobo. are going in. Oh. The ball is Abdullah Popal. Really have to take advantage of those situations. It's tough to score, but at least get a shot off. And now Holyoke tries to catch him off guard, but nothing comes of it. Moose. Heather. Overjumped it. Up in the air. Header. Moose. And another call against the Queensboro Tigers. Nearly eight minutes in, no score. Got him, got him. Um, Takes a while to set this up. It's almost like a stalling game. Yeah. How it is the first game of the year, some stagnant offense. Both teams pushing back and forth, trying to get something going. Sure, teams trying to get in sync for later in the year. These aren't going to be the games that are remembered. Those will be the CUNY ones. You know, the Suffolk, the Nassau's of the world. The number ones and the number twos. Yeah, the back conference. to uh, Massachusetts tomorrow, actually. Lovo. And the shot and is off. Was it was Jiteni Biao. His shot was off. Number 17 in the second season for Togo. From originally from Togo, now at Queensboro Community College. Today's the first of two Massachusetts games. Holyoke Community College comes in. And then tomorrow, the number nine team country in America. Oh, and now a chance. No. Nope. Bunker Hill Community College in tomorrow. Oh, there was a shove there that the refs missed, and then a trip. The player who went down was Kyle Duquette, who had 10 assists last year. Michael Hagelstein tells the rest of the Cougars to crash the net on this. This may be the first legitimate opportunity of the game. Would you say so? This is the first major scoring chance. Um, actually, yeah, this is the first goal attempt um, by the Olio Cougars. And the free kick is going to be taken by number 20. Number 20 is Patrick Cronin. Um, 10 minutes in. So the Queensboro Tigers trying to set the defense ready. And the free kick it's is Cronin. taken. And, and it's deflected Cronin. Wonderful play of defense by Sawane. Really Wadu. was. And the Queensboro Tigers nice keep pushing moves. forward. You can see a wonderful display of skill and agility. Cronin had two shots, two hard kicks, but none of them even came close to the net. Double header. Now a chance. Abdullah Popal. And that's way out of play. It was Mabel, he was trying to trying to catch the Cougars sleeping and throw it back in fast while everybody was watching the ball. Popile. Anthony Pipitone. Number 21 for the Tigers. Out of play. And another throw into the Tigers. 
Has a throw in, it's Pipitone. Loses it. And the Olya Kugas push forward. Is it gonna go out? And it's pushed out of play. It is now. Twelve minutes in, no score. Rowan. Header. Say so far I've seen a very outstanding defense from Queensborough. Um, I think that's a very, very strong part of the game. Playing the crowd of Cougars. The Cougars have it. And they push forward. There's a chance. Cougars finally oh, get it. Oh, great save. Still scoreless. Keep him there, keep him there. Queensborough Tigers have decided to keep the ball on the ground and take it in gently. Turnover. And then Duquette hits the floor. Up in the air. And it's out to Holyoke. Thirteen and a half minutes in, no score. Throwing was too fast. Another whistle blown. What are your thoughts so far, 14 minutes into the season? Um, this is it's, it's, it's up to a pretty impressive start, because I see a very strong part of Queensborough again, which, is really, which was really, and that was a wonderful show to go by Oli Oak. The Olio Cougars are trying to play an air game, and fairly, I think, Queensborough has the added advantage to win that. And Queensborough playing smartly by placing the ball on the ground and taking it slowly. There haven't been too many opportunities so far. So far for either team. It's been three shots attempts by... It's like everybody just froze on that play. Yeah. Got hit in the back. It's whatever... Look, where's he going? Which every ball a QCC Tiger gets, you see five Olio Cougars onto him. Yeah, it's a swarming defense. And the whistle has just been blown. The head, Popal, Mabeo, Pipitone. Up ahead. Nice display of skill. Number 14 with the ball. Crosses it in. Oh, and it's a wonderful edit. Mark Burrick had it and tried to center it but couldn't. And QCC Tigers running back on defense. Cougars talking strategy on the field. Matthew Knowlton. Knowlton giving instructions. As high up in the air. <laughs> Whiffed on the header. He might have an injury. And the ball is out. So far, you see the Oleo Krugers have weighed emphasis on the midfield, which has been the better part of the game. Now, on that injury, he went, there was a ball high in the air that he tried to head. I can't see the number from here, but. He tried to head and he missed and just came down awkwardly. 
And now the trainers come out again, clock stops. 28.37 to go in the first half. Still no score. As I said before, the Oleo Tigers try to play an air game, which basically I think it's, it's a better chance for Queen Borough to get in the ball into the goal because they have the height advantage. And I think if the Oleo Cougars want to try to get the ball into the goal of the QCC Tigers, you have to place the ball on ground and show good skill, which is what Queensborough have been doing better all game. And again, these are the kinds of games that are played, try to feel each other out in the first half, maybe get a goal or two. Yeah. Number 13 Many is back up. games though. It was number 13 who was down, Michael Hagelstein. He's up and walking off under his own power. <laughs> Players have a drink or two before they get back to the field. Get this drink back. Queensboro being coached by Zef Kabashi. Holyoke being coached by Abel Darojai. Sixteen minutes and twenty-three seconds in, no score. See what they come out with after the break. Maybe a chance to set something up. Get some more opportunities. So far, you see an excellent ball distribution from Queensborough. Mm -hmm. Body set the floor. Throw in. And cleared. Pipitone has it go out of bounds. Cougars have it now. Maximo Juka. Juka was fighting Cronin for control. Maximo Juka hopefully could get behind the Cougars defense. He actually ran track in high school. Some extra athleticism. Speed could come into good use. Keeps it in. It was in the crowd, the Tigers come out with it. All I'm going to do is put in a very good... Here's a good chance. A very good show today. One more, one more. Get some assistance from Abdullah Popal. Mabeu. Give and go. And the Cougars clear it. And it's offside. Patrick Cronin knew there was a chance. Maximo Juka. Pass a little wide, Duquette. Some moves. Up ahead. Oh. Kicked way over. It's almost going to the tennis courts. Almost 20 minutes in, scoreless. Somebody has to go run and get it. Way down there. Must have overshot the goal by 80 feet. Uh, 
and all your opinions Some get steel. the ball. Well, I can hear the steal. Goes out. Almost had a scoring chance. Tigers trying to set up the defense. And we see the first yelling out instructions at each other. The first kind of kick of the game to the Olio Cougars. We're taken by number 20. Number 20, Patrick Cronin, first year. Patrick Cronin has put in a very good show today. Yes, Cronin was actually the one who attempted the penalty kick. And Cronin, center of the net. Wonderful play of defense by the Queensbury Tigers. As they run forward, the ball is being taken forward by Blue Apple Paul. Up ahead. Good advancement. They turned a holy oak corner kick into a scoring opportunity. Trying to set it up. Oh, oh just wide. Wide of the net. And that was the first closest goal I turned by the Queensboro Tigers. Probably. Mamadou Sawena was in there, number 15. He's contributed both offensively and defensively this game. That was a good job by Queensboro. I mean, there's a corner kick for Holyoke, and they turn it into a, a near goal at the other end. Yeah. That's a very good show of offense. Um, the scoring opportunities, now that they're a little deeper into the game, are coming a little more frequently, as opposed to the first five or ten minutes where they're just feeling each other out. I think we'll have a better show in the second half because most of the players are just playing their first game together. Sure. A little more in sync. Throwing. Edison Macias, number nine. Nice moves by Macias. And Macias goes down. Edison Macias is a freshman from Francis Lewis High School. Reminds me of a young Cristiano Ronaldo, the number nine player for Real Madrid also. Macias scored four, four goals in his senior year at Francis Lewis. It's a wonderful skill display by Clinsbar Tigers. Keep it in. Back to the Olio Cougars. Yep. And free kick call for an overly aggressive play by Amadou Sawene. Halfway through the first half, scoreless. Edison Macias has come into the game, and there he is right now. He's put some nice moves on, added a spark, some near scoring opportunities, although the Cougars have it now. Another whistle blown. Um, Queensbury Tigers are preparing for the second substitution. Coming in with the Duane Nutt from Sheridan and Tobago in his first season. I'd say the Cougars are really getting in uh, touch with themselves. They lost their top three point scorers from last year. Joe Lucella, the All-American, as that goes over the net. Uh, Tommy Cowell, who had 15 points, including seven goals, and Jeff Welch, who had 12 points, including five goals. They still have Kyle Duquette, who last year, it's kind of a statistical oddity, had 10 points, but no goals, all assists. And he's been in the center of the action so far. Macias, nice job to keep it in. Macias, almost a handball. I got it, I got it. John Coward, number 16 for the Cougars. He's going to kick from almost right in front of us. Solid kick. One full free kick, ball. The Coonsbury Tigers almost recovered the ball. Almost went out. Wonderful oh, display body of skill. The floor. And who's going to come out with it? Whistle blown. It's going to stay with the Cougars. Get out. Get out. 
header. We've seen more defensive, more offensive play from mm -hmm. the Oli old Cougars than we saw in the first 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. I would say the uh, pace of the game has definitely picked up. Yeah, definitely. Last 10 minutes. Um, we see, we've seen more offensive plays than defensive plays now. Yep. Both teams pushing forward. Now the Queensboro Tigers pushing forward. Tigers have it. 1935 to go in the first half. Nice move. Once again, Mumodi Sawini. Go ahead, and then he takes it back out. That's it to Mumodi Abdullahi Popal. He's just going in a circle. That's it. I believe it's Maximo Juka. The head. And he tried to get it to Anthony Pipitone in his first season from Christ the King, but it was broken up by Holy Oak. Throwing. It's a chance. Up in the I air. Think we see a first goal. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, boy. It was a good chance there. Oh, an injury. Collision. Collision by two Queensboro Tigers. Yeah, well, they're both up. It was a legitimate shot, though. I mean, really good chance. 18.37 to go in the first half. 18.32. As the clock winds down, still it remains tight at zero. Ref giving out instructions. Um. Cougars have it. 18 minutes to go in the first half. Cougars have definitely been more aggressive. As have the Tigers. Action is definitely picking up. Dwayne Knott in his first season, he's been in the middle of some plays now. Number 12 for the Tigers. Throwing to Queensboro Tigers. <coughs> They're trying to do it too fast. Um about the third time that's happening, trying to get. Mm -hmm. Trying to catch the Cougars offside, setting up their defense, but you gotta let them set up. Have to give them a few moments at least. Murphy is one of the Queensboro Tigers. Now the Cougars will throw in. 17 minutes to go. Nice job by Popal. He's been in the middle of some action in his first season from Thomas Edison High School. Oh, now a chance for the Cougars. Cougars for the Queensboro Tigers. Patrick Cronin. Wonderful save by the goalie. Nice slide. Make sure he couldn't get a shot off. And the throw goes out. Patrick Cronin has been the player in the middle of the action for the Cougars. I'd say Queensboro has been more I don't know, spread around. Yeah, they're on the plate. Ball is More ball movement, I guess. More ball circulation, mm -hmm. ball movement. Um, well, we've seen most of the offensive players go back to defend, and we've just seen that once again. And the Queensboro Tigers push forward. Let me see it. No, couldn't get it. It's just the ball. Football gets it back, back to the Cougars. Pipitone chasing it, it's a, can't get it. It was a speed game by the old Yo Cougars, got it. And it's a throwing by the Queensboro Tigers. Mabeu, huh? There are two balls, they're gonna have to blow the whistle. Or just kick it out. Second ball in the field kind of slowed down the Tigers. They were ready for a throwing. And now the Cougars get it right back and kick it out. And the throwing by the Queensboro Tigers. This is probably one of the better opportunities the Tigers have had. 
I'd say most of the action has been in the middle of the field or deep in Queensboro territory, right? Yeah, definitely. But now we see the Tigers pushing yeah. forward, and we also see a good chair of defense by um, the Olio Cougars. And again, he goes out. Another throw in. Another throw into the Queensboro Tigers. This time, they take your time to do it to make sure the players are ready for it. And right, instead of trying to throw off the Cougars, you might as well just set up your own play, right? Set up your own players, yeah. And we see, once again, Mercedes is in the middle of the action. But once he gets the ball, the Oleo Cougars send nice about steal. two or three defenders to him. Well, and he gives back. This happens with so many bodies within like a five foot radius. A lot of turnovers. And there's another one. Pile again. There really hasn't the been a time where, you know, most of this game has just been each team trading the ball every five seconds. But now 14 minutes to go in the first half. There's barely been either of one of none of each side have had a five minute possession. It's I mean, been, it's really been a traded possession, which, I mean, these offenses, and there's Patrick Cronin again. I'll say the possession has been 55 45, um, more to the Oliok. Mm -hmm. Cougars. That sounds about right. Um, now the oh, Queensboro Tigers push forward. Hippotone's chasing it. By, um, nice Ol play made. That was a good job by Josiah Cook. And once again, the ball approaches us, but that's stopped by the ball boy. And assuring by Mbeu with the throw in again. Mbeu in his second season from Togo. And there's Pipitone. Oh, made a nice move. In a crowd, back out. Once again, a swarm of defenders around him. Popal. Popal almost lost it. Oh, nice kill by Duquette. Duquette. Put, uh, Duquette. Um, now no. it's captain versus captain and Steve Offer and Michael Queensbury. Lopez. Michael Lopez in the second season from Bayside High School. Kicked it out. It was number four, Michael Lopez, who made sure Duquette wouldn't get a shot off. I we see a substitution by the Oleo Cougars. Twelve and a half minutes to go in the first half. Scoreless tie. Ball hit the ref. And it's out. Throw in by Josiah Cook. Cook with the throw in. Mbeu, team's trying to get in a rhythm, opening game of the year. Wonderful buzz distribution by Mbeu. As the Queensboro Tigers push forward. It's been pretty even, I think. Pipitone has almost gotten it the last few times. And once again, Queensboro Tigers defense. And the ball is out. Where's the ball? 11.43 to go. Josiah Cook with the ball now. Going to throw in from right in front of us. One on your back hoop, one coming. Another throw in. <laughs> Is that a handball? Handball by Abdullah Popo. And he's given a yellow card by the referee for an intentional foul, which is definitely not the best thing to do hmm. in the spirit of sportsmanship and fair play. Tried to go up and block it, but he just waved his arms up in front of him. I guess he just didn't expect to touch it. Number 18, Riley Fornis is going to kick. Waits Let for the Cougars get in position first. Throw in. 0-0. Zero, zero. 10.48 to go in the first. Olio Cougars with the ball. Who's going to come up with it? Cougars momentarily at least, and now the Tigers. Tigers back with the ball. Mm. Mud slipped. And distribution. It was Mamadou Sawena, he slipped momentarily. 10.25 to go. Yeah. 
Now let's see in the final 10 minutes and maybe when we get down to five minutes if each team takes a little more conservatively and just tries to go into halftime without giving up, you know, the scoreless tie. I think the Queensbury Tigers have a chance of putting one in before the end of this first half because we'll see more offense in them. Thing is, the last few minutes. Cooper Marsh was out. Thing is, you don't want to try to be too aggressive and try to score a goal and then end up giving one up. Rebeu. Um, Ramatola Popal, number 19. Not to be mistaken with Ramadola Popal. It's out. Holy Oak ball. Under 10 minutes to play in the first half. No score. Um, it's that first game of the season feel. Have the uh, low scoring. Teams trying to get in rhythm. Some injuries. Again. So the two Propals are on the field right now. Right now, I guess we have the Propal brothers. One's a, um, one's a striker and the other one's a midfielder. And we have number 22 playing midfield and we have number 19 playing the position of a striker. Here's a corner kick. And it's blocked back out. You know, both defenses have been superb as Maximo Juki sends it back in. These corner kicks and now Cronin gets behind the crowd. Uh, that's exactly what we were talking about, Cronin with the chance. He Wonderful shoots in a save. great save. Wonderful save. Keep the scoreless tie with 8-12 to go. Roam back in. Kick back in, I should say. And it goes out. What a save. That's what we were talking about. That, that happened twice where Cronin got behind the pack, but couldn't get a good opportunity, but he did that time. He did that time. And this, he also had somebody right behind him, to keep him honest. That's why some teams will get more conservative at the end of a half. Don't want to give up a goal like that. Both defenses have been really good when there's a corner kick. I mean, they don't even really get a shot on goal. Can't even make it through a crowd. Um, I think once there's a solid defense, it's going to be hard to see more of an offensive game, which is a show of goals, because most teams, most te both teams have decided to pay more attention to all defense and offense. But now we see another chance for the Olu Cougars, but wonderful defense once again. Battle Queensboro Tigers. As a quick, now how many shots has Queensboro gotten on goal so far? Um, Queensboro have had two shots on goal. The only Cougars have had about five or six shots on goal. Um, From Bayou. But even with Queensboro just having two shots on goal, they've come more closer than the only Cougars have come. As the Queensboro Tigers push forward once again. Stopped by the defense. And, and the handball? And the referee calls the handball. 6.47 to go in the first half. And the free kick to Queensboro. Well, here's a good chance now. Get one before halftime. Half Who's going to do the kick in here? The kick to be taken by um, number 19, one of the Popals. Or is it? Cougar setting up the defense. Um, you're supposed to, uh, the player is supposed to be at least 10 feet away from the ball. So, as you can well, see, the record tells him to you'd almost, want, you'd almost want to back up for your own safety. It's going to be number 15. And uh oh. Over the net. And kind of kick to the Queensboro Tigers. It was Momadou Selena with the kick. Solid. Right off the head. That'll probably lead to a few concussions this season. Um, I think you see less injuries in the, um, in the sport of soccer than in most of the um, other sports because um, it's, a, it's a context sport, but um, most Corner players. Kick. And defense again. Yep. Again, a corner kick with no shot. And now 5.20 to go in the first half.
trying to move it forward. It was aimed for Pipitone. Pipitone couldn't get it away. And now, almost a turnover, but not quite. Fifty-fifty. Who's going to come out? Bodies hit the floor. Queensborough has it. Moe just a win and recovers. Passes to Pipitone. Pipitone loses it. Yeah. Pipitone never had it. Four and a half to go in the first half. Throwing. Sawena. Um, so far, do you think has been a bit, one of the better players on the Queensborough team? I'd say Pipitone has really been. Macias had a nice, had a series of nice moves. Almost led to a goal offside. Almost let it get through, even though the whistle was already blown. Four minutes to go, first half. Setting it up. Popal. Um, the Quinsburg Tigers push forward in the last few minutes of the game. Hoping to get something going before the half. Yeah, before the half. We're three minutes and 40 seconds away from going into halftime with the scoreless tie. Players shouting out instructions. Well, we've seen three substitutions for the Queensboro Tigers and just one for the Olio Cougars. We've seen um, Abdullah Popal come on. We've seen Ramtullah Popal come on. And we've also seen Popal, no. Nope. It's going to be Selena. And, and he overshoots it. That. Overshoots it. I almost overshot the fence. He's heading for the Q27. Um, another substitution for... Um, it's number 21, right? Tyrell Stewart is in, freshman. Under three minutes to go now. It's a pretty strange strategy, bringing a player in three minutes into the end of the first half. Hey, maybe he'll give a little spark, and there he is now, Tyrell Stewart. Plus, it's the first game you want to get people in. I don't think it's that strange. Make sure all the players get a fill. And, and here's Tyrell Stewart. No, nope. Tyrell again. Stewart almost had a chance to score. Now those guys who come in with three minutes to go, they try to leave a lasting impression. You see, it's up ahead to Pipitone. Pipitone. No. Stop. Pipitone had his, that's probably the best chance Queensboro was had, right? Um, if you think so. about breakaway? Yeah, I'll say so. With two minutes to go now? Um, you see Bill try to cheer up the team? Last two minutes? Dwayne not. Hey. 100 seconds remaining in the half. See if the Cougars get really aggressive here. Tiger Savage, Sawena, nice move. Oh, Duquette, blocked. Offside called against. Offside, they tried to get it to Terrell Stewart, number 21. With now one minute to play in the first half. The Quinsborough Tigers take their time. Slow it down as the game approaches a scoreless, a scoreless halftime. Here we go again. And a chance by the Queensboro it's, Tigers. It's, it's Macias. Macias. And, and it's stopped. That may have been the best chance. The, the Tigers' best chances are coming here in the last two minutes. minutes. Yeah, oh, Pimpitone her. had the breakaway with two minutes left, and now with 35 seconds left, Macias. See a corner kick. Corner kick. Wait until the Tigers get in position. And oh. that was too much for Macias. Mm -hmm. Tyrell Stewart. It's out. 15 seconds to go. Down to 10. Well, this is how the, this is how the half is going to end. 
Well, it doesn't matter whose it is. It's just a fight over possession. I think it's a good tactic because I think he was trying, just trying to waste some time. Well, it's halftime. Um, Does anybody notice? Um, I think, I think a couple of minutes have been added before the halftime ends. Some stoppage time. How much is the stoppage time? Three minutes? Um, and, well, and again, it's kind well, there is no prefer. stoppage time at this level, so. After it comes to an end. It's just the people keeping the clock don't always notice. After it comes to an end, we had a scoreless first half by either team. 15 minute halftime coming up. Um, what do you think about, about Queensborough, about having about four to five shirts and goals in the last few well, I would say that at first the offense was just getting its stride, but then the last two minutes they had their best chances. Pipitone with the breakaway, Macias had a good shot on goal. And the Cougars, I would say, I mean, it's 0-0, zero, zero, but I think Holyoke has been more aggressive. Yeah, it's, I would say it's been more, um, I don't know, more of a, like I said before, 55-45, more chances to Holyoke on offense. Well, Queensborough put on a good show in defense, and Holyoke has taken control of the midfield. Now it's halftime. Oh, for something better. About to begin for the second half. QCC students David Russell and Yemi Osi Bogan here. Um, as some of you QCC sport fans probably know, David Russell also announces um, the basketball game. And this is my first time joining in for the second game. Yeah, welcome to QCC sports announcing. QCC sports announcing. Um, so the first half, what were your thoughts overall? Um, it, was pretty, it was pretty good. It was a pretty good play of Pretty good, um, pretty good show of defense. I really didn't see much of an offense. Well, I see, I see a very good defense from both sides. I would say the first 30 minutes or so was just finding a rhythm on offense for both sides. Yeah. And then, I mean, the best scoring opportunities came in the last few minutes. Especially for Queensboro, their two best chances came in the final two minutes. When they had Anthony Pipitone for one and Edison Macias, they both had a breakaway opportunity at the end. I mean, the goaltender for Holyoke didn't get much work until those last two minutes. Until the last two minutes. Um, I think so far, the, um, the Queensborough goalie has been tested more. Mm -hmm. And I think this second half, we're going to see a stronger Queensborough. Mm -hmm. um, this starts in the same way they ended um, um, the first half with, um, with, um, with four guys on defense, um, four, mid, um, four midfield, and I have two strikers. And why do you think there's been no scoring? How much of it is uh, good off, good defense and I think, stagnant offense? Um, I think it's a it's a 60 defense, um, 30 midfield, and a 10 in, in offense. Okay. So I think this time around it's I can actually switch up because as you can see, Queensbury is already pushing forward, but we have a trolling. So do you expect each team to be a little more aggressive this half? Yeah, I expect to see more aggressiveness. Um, I expect to see Cronin, Cronin you know, just stay in front and try to wait for the ball to come to him. He's actually going to go for the ball now and try to get some goals in. Um, I, see, I expect to see more ball distribution from um, Oliok, as they started doing already. And there's Patrick And the first Cronin. goal attempt and a wonderful save by Chris It was, but that just shows 35 seconds into the half and there was already a legitimate scoring opportunity. I would say both defenses, the thing that caught my eye was on corner kicks that there were, weren't even really quality shots that yeah. came out of it. But Quinsborough actually turned one of them to almost into an offensive play. That's very true. Almost play. turned it into a goal of their own. And once again, Quinsborough starts with ball on the ground. And ball is out. And I'm throwing to Rowan by Josiah Cook. Duquette. Patrick Cronin. He was probably the best performer for Holyoke in the first half. Sliding save. It might be an injury. Um, no, it's a little slow to get up. It's a little slow to get up. Old is new. And I guess mm. it's okay and it's back to the kid. Yeah. He's done a good job so far. Dwayne not Up ahead and Holyoke will have it. Matt O'Neill. Number nine for the Cougars. And Cook whiffs on it and it goes out. Dwayne Knott. Player from Trinidad and Tobago. 
gives it up to uh, Maximo Juca. Pause. Substitution, I believe. Had to send Macias in the corner. It was centered, but nothing came of it. Maximo Juca was in there. A few Tigers were in there and stopped. First shot on call for QCC, but that was an extremely, that was one of the best we've seen from them so far. Mm -hmm. Two and a half minutes into the second half. No score. Dwayne Knott. Um, nice moves by Knott. Queensborough Tigers are actually playing with one. And here's Pipitone. Pipitone. Pipitone couldn't get the shot off. A little too strong. But Pipitone has probably had the best scoring opportunities. It's usually him in the middle of something. QCC Tigers are playing with one man out of the game. And I would say the offenses in the first three minutes of the second half have been much stronger than all 45 minutes of the first half, right? The pace of the game has definitely picked up. Wouldn't you say, I mean, between the first three minutes of this half and the first half? Major difference. Up ahead. Stop. Gets it to midfield. Players want a whistle. Player was down. Sydney Bacuarizio. Bacuarizio, excuse me. Headed. Dwayne Knott. Duquette. Cougar setting it up. Patrick Cronin, Quinn Hedt, Mabeu, nice moves. And it goes out. Finally, the referee allows Omar Dusawena back in the game. Trying to the Queensboro Tigers. Take it by Mbenu. As Mamadou pushes forward. Here's Dwayne Knott. Passes to Dwayne Knott. A little too Knott. far out in front of him. No, Knott catches, Knott up, catches to it. up it. And it's out. Cougars will have it. Josiah Cook throwing in. Back to Cook. And oh. Dwayne Knott gets the ball. Nice. Dwayne Knott. Crosses in. Centers. And goal! He scores! And keeps the Tigers going. It's Edison Macias in his first season from Francis Lewis, who puts the Tigers ahead with the first goal of the game. I Five minutes and 16 seconds into the second half, the Tigers finally break through. Their offense has really come out in the second half. I mean, first five minutes they didn't score, but you could see they were really making progress. And then Edison Macias with the score. Um, that was a very nice um, display. Of athleticism by um, doing, by doing that, um, was able to get stop the ball from going now, crosses the ball in, and was was able to push it in. Well, I was just about to say. I mean, Josiah Cook was throwing in, and Dwayne not intercepted it. Intercepted it, yeah. And he leads to the goal, and Macias really came through. It's See, this one of the around. Cougars. I didn't catch who tried to head it and whiffed on it, and Macias came through for the score. Um, you can see the Queensboro Tigers actually coming out more aggressive now. Now, do you, the ball do you think they may chance. become conservative and try to... Actually, I'd see them going for more goals and not trying to protect the net. Wonderful and shot! Oh, it's all coming out now. Two goals in 38 seconds. And the Popal. second goal by Rep Raptor Malai Popal. And it's 2-0 to QCC. 
So no scoring in all of the first half, the first five minutes of this half, and then two goals in 38 seconds. And right as I about, right as I say, are they going to get more conservative? They score. I think they're yeah, actually going to go for more goals. Once I think it's a team that they've seen. They, now they're able to break through the midfield and break through the defense. They're going to go for a couple more. And every time I ask about conservative offense, they score. So I think I should ask so, more often. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, um, basically I see. Now you're gonna play, actually play um, just a three-player defense and a four um, and a four-player from me um, striking position because you're gonna go for more goals. So it's gonna become his own defense. It's gonna think? become his own defense. Yes. Okay. Patrick Cronin. Now you have to make sure the next few minutes are important. I mean, all 39 minutes are important, but to make sure they don't get one too fast here yeah. and try to make it up, you don't want to give them any momentum. The momentum is all Queensboro right now. Um, with one goal at 5.16 and then 5.16 and, and, and 5.38, I believe. Um, scored two goals. So far, 30. this game shows a pretty promising season for Queensboro Tigers. Maybe they could actually, this season, they'll actually put in some fight in the CUNY Championship. What do you think? Possibly. Possibly. You play like this. Yeah, you play. play like this every game with a couple of plays. Who are, who I think it really ready. shows the goal tender has been good. And then you look at the quick strike offense, although it's fine to say because they didn't score for the first 50 minutes. Yeah. But you score two goals in 38 seconds. It shows that they have a quick strike offense. Um, and I think Holyoke may have been caught a little off guard. They may have yeah. expected a, uh, a slow game, more defensive game. And Queensborough was coming out here very aggressive. aggressive. No whistle blown. Probably should have been. You see the Queensboro, the Queensboro Tigers, the players actually um, getting very, really angry at the referee. Now, I funny. think as Terrell Stewart heads it, I think you're going to have to see Holyoke uh, to put yourself in their shoes for a minute. I mean, they're really going to have to crash the net from now on, right? Um, you're you're going to have to catch the net, but it's going to be it's going to be a more aggressive side from the Queensboro Tigers because... So you think Queensboro, have, even up by two goals with 37 minutes left, is going to be more aggressive than Holyoke? Yeah, I think Queensboro Tigers because... Um, Things are not going to win right now. The um, the referees not giving them the correct calls, and this guy, this guy's going to win the game. Sure do. So yeah, with all the momentum in their favor, Josiah Cook throwing in. Well, the players are playing good, but when you get when players get injured and the referee doesn't give them the right call, I think that motivates the player to actually play better and get, give themselves more opportunities. So I see a way better, um, a way better game by the Queensboro Tigers. Yeah, they've really come out here great in the second half. John Coward, the header. What? Cat. Out of bounds. Pipitone. I think if Queensboro scored a third goal here, that would really uh, put it out of reach. Um, actually, I don't think they'll score three goals in 35 minutes. Oh, but you catch sleep. Maximo Juca, the nice play. Actually, I don't think three goals doesn't mean they couldn't be a comeback. Well, I, I mean, it doesn't, but it would be very difficult that you don't score for 50 minutes. And Holyoke has a pretty good team. They could make a comeback, but right now, right now, they, they're really not on a current formation. Well, I, I would say the two around. goals have been because of turnovers. So if they were playing just, I don't want to say smarter, but a little more conservative, conservative safer. Yeah, they're playing more safer Because now. you look at the first goal that came, it's because Dwayne Knott made a great interception deep in their zone. Mbeu. Mbeu. Mbeu goes down. And that should have been another call by the referee because Mbeu's shirt was pulled. But once again, the, the referee and the linesman skipped that. Refs letting them play? Hey, the refs have to get back into it. First game of the year. It's the first game of the year, but as a referee, you're always supposed to be ready to do your job at any time of the season. Nobody's perfect, but that's how it goes. Queensboro's not going to complain too much. You don't want to turn the refs against you when you're up by two. And you see, and look now, I mean, even now up by two, where's the ball? It's in the Cougar zone. Dwayne Knott, Dwayne Knott has played really well today, and there's a nice move on Josiah Cook. In his first season in Queensboro. Yeah, Knott, Knott has caught my eye. Player out of Trinidad and Tobago. So how long, there are 35 minutes left right now, 2 nothing Queensboro. How long do you think it'll be until the Cougars get really, uh, you know, hurry up and try to get something going now? 
How long is it going to be, Yemi? I think 20 minutes left? The, Q, um, the Cougars are actually trying to push forward, but um, with Queensborough, with Queensborough actually you not know, playing any midfield now, you're just saying um, straight straight defense and straight offense, then I think it's going to be hard for them to be able to actually like get a goal in. Because um, you see, you've seen a good show by um, the Queensborough Tigers. Well, two goals in 30 seconds. You see, once again, the referee skips Might the have an injury. Cougars playing, another player goes down to kick it out, right? Player injury, and... And of course, I mean, 34 minutes left. You don't need two goals in the next four minutes or anything. You could score one in 15 minutes, score another one 15 minutes after that. Well, you could score another two goals in... 38 seconds. seconds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nothing wrong with two goals in 38 seconds. Hey. I, that was actually wonderful. I'm saying if you're uh, the Cougars, the way you have to think, you don't have to make it up in a minute. And, and I think one of the things for the Cougars is it feels like only a few players have been uh, really involved. You think about Duquette, you think about Patrick Cronin. I think uh, most other players are planning to save, but the Queensborough players are going all out. And well, I like it. They scored two goals in 38 seconds, and they're not taking their foot off the pedal. Want to go for more? These kids are playing like it's like watching a professional, a professional football or a professional soccer match. Where you see the players. It took uh, a half to find the rhythm, but now, first five minutes they came out aggressive, and no whistle on that. I mean, I think I think now you can clearly see the referees against Queensborough. <laughs> because it doesn't look like they're getting any oh. calls going your way. And now... And now another call. We oh. close the gate to Olio, so... Down to 32 and a half minutes remaining, 2 nothing Queensboro. The goal by Edison Macias for the first score, and then Popal made it 2 nothing just 38 seconds later. Cougars bringing in some subs, as is Queensboro. Queensboro mix. Number change. 14 is in the game for Queensboro. Mark Burrick from William C. Bryant High School. And now it's on a Queensboro side of play. Nice header. That's another thing, I mean, even when the Cougars have it, I think the Cougars' best chance of this game was late in the first half when the Tigers looked like they had a scoring opportunity, but then the Cougars got it to Patrick Cronin, who has it right now. And Cronin had a breakaway chance. Offside. Thirty-one twenty to go. Josiah Cook. Gets it to Matt O'Neill. O'Neill with it. Up ahead. And it goes out. Two balls on, on the field right now. Dwayne Knott. Burrick. I could have said that was, that was kept into play. Well, I, I, I think it barely went out. Yeah. I think it was a good call. Josiah Cook. It's funny because the Cougars are being shut out, but you can't really say like the offense has been stagnant or that they haven't been really advancing it. I mean, they have been, but the Tigers' defense has been that good today. Yeah, I think um, we have a pretty solid defense like well, the Tigers have. I think you have the confidence that you could take the game or you could take it all through the way. And not only is good defense good for that reason alone, but it could also lead to some scoring opportunities it's like is, yeah. a Dwayne Knott's turnover or a Dwayne Knott. You know, making that nice play, leading to Edison Macias' goal. And now Mark Burke. Burke trying to make it 3-0. Out of bounds. Under 30 minutes to go. Trying by the Queensborough Tigers. 
Schau zu Messias. Das ist ein Berlin und Berlin, das ist ein Mark. Played well today. It's been a good show. He is. I think. Anytime you could score the uh, go-ahead goal. I think every one of the Tigers have put in their first game today. It's the first game of the season. And it is, and then you look at Holyoke and the players that left them. You have uh, Joe Lucella, who scored 40 points in 11 games last year. I mean, 15 goals and 10 assists in 11 games. To lose that, to lose an All-American first team. You know. I think when you look at the Tigers too, this is a team coming in with um, over, over a good um, a good 80% of it and the scored um, all um, in the first season. Yeah. Coming out of high school or coming from other countries. Sure. And you have just like about four or five players who um, played last season and just getting so those new guys are just getting used to the system actually playing pretty impressively. Sure. The way it is in community college, of course, after each season, it seems like whole rosters leave. All starters. Yeah. So see a big turnover. Tigers have it. I like the Tigers. They're not just you know sitting on the lead and just letting the clock run out. I mean. They, yeah. Even though they have two goals, they still want more. And yeah, they're playing their game. That shows Macias. you. That shows you. That shows you. That's what makes. That's what makes players. I think you could also give the coach some credit. Yeah, Zef Kabashi, yeah. doing a good job. The team looks good so far. We got some pretty good guys in the team this year, and you can definitely see a difference. Yeah. And I think as the season goes on, you see, I think you even see a more better show, because this is the first time this, most of these kids are playing together. Yeah. And for players who are playing for the first time, they're playing like, you know, they've played for at least two or three seasons together. And you know what, think about another uh, good coaching job that Zef Kabashi did. You know, halftime adjustments as the ball goes out. Yeah. How do you, you know, you go over, you have 15 minutes at halftime. They didn't score in the first half. And they come out and they scored two goals in the first seven minutes after halftime. I mean, those adjustments. And with 27 minutes and 20 seconds to go, the Tigers have a 2 nothing lead over the Cougars. Yeah. Um, you see, I think they came out, I think basically as a coach, where you tell your players when you come out of the second half, it's just, you know, push forward, be aggressive, aim for the goal. It's just basically it's normal, it's then it's someone playing defense or playing safe, and you just go for goal. You just go for goal, push more, and you can just see the Tigers are doing that right now. As doing not crosses the ball in once again. Um, so we're losing the goal. And here's Patrick Cronin. And, and you think, I mean, you wouldn't even know who's down 2 nothing. I mean, the Cougars are barely getting any opportunities here. Just shows Dwayne not what a good job the Tigers are doing. I mean, here's a chance, and you know, the player goes down. He wanted a whistle. See, um, we see Dwayne not who's in his first season, and he's putting on a very good show. You see Momo Dusuweno is in the second season. I mean, it's a very promising team. Prom very, very promising team. No whistles. They're really letting them play. And it's going both ways. I mean, John Coward for the Cougars just went down and he wanted a whistle that he didn't get. You know, I think when a referee lets things like that happen, um, you, you either lose control of the game or it becomes a show of strength, which is basically, just basically that's what's going on right now. I think the stronger team wins at the end of the game and let's see which, which that's going to be. Well, Queen's have always been stronger so far. So far because they're up. Um, it's funny you think so far. I mean, there's been 65 minutes of play and you've had two goals in a 38 second span. And other than that, nothing well, high up in the air. Queensborough have had 60. I think they've basically had over 60% of possession this half. And once again. Uh, in this half, I'd say it's more like three quarters. So, so once again, they push forward and. Steve Hoforano, number three. Crosses it in. Header. Um, Last year, Steve Hoforano was on the all sportsmanship team in Region 15. And it's wide, under 25 minutes to play.
tigers hanging on here. And now, and I think if you're in the cougar shoes, I think you just have to crash the net here. You have less than 25 minutes to go. This this half hasn't, I think you have to get a little more aggressive this half. I mean, they've had one or two chances, but been playing for about 65 minutes. Yeah. You're gonna need two goals in the next 24 minutes. Um, I think they could, you know, a goal could trap in at any time, but right now, the way the Tigers are playing, you're playing extremely like a destiny because mm -hmm. they do, most of their, most of their forward, forward players or the strikers just stay forward. The defenders just stay, just stay at the back. It's not like you see, um, like the Tigers, every time there's a defensive play, Going, coming towards their way, everybody goes backwards. But when it comes to um, when it comes to the um, the Oli, um, Oli Cougars, they just remain at the back. And as you can see, once again, the Tigers push forward. Um, the Tigers have really been playing as a unit this half. Superb. And there's Dwayne Nod, who was putting a pretty a pretty good show. Yeah, I mean it was his uh, defense that led to the first goal of this game. Yeah. Goalie came really far out. Yeah, I was just trying to see if he needed. It well, was, I mean, if Duque got that, he could have put that in without any, uh, without anybody around. That could have cut the lead in half with still 23 whole minutes to play. When that goes out. I'm really impressed by the QCC Tigers today, and this is, this, it's been a pretty, it's been a pretty, it's been a pretty good game. It's been a pretty good show. It has, and right now, it's not over yet. Right now, the Oli Okugos push forward, and it's um, it's a corner kick to Oli Okugos. That see if they could take advantage of this. Well, here's a chance. This has been their, uh, I guess, bugaboo today. Every time they have a corner kick, it it's totally doesn't been, go yeah. in. They barely get a shot off. Still 22 and a half minutes to play. Oh, nasty collision. There's a Tiger down momentarily and he's clutching his knee. Can't tell who it is from here. Is it 20 or? It might be Mohammed Hagag, but I'm not sure. Can't tell if it's number two zero. It's number 20, Mohamed Agag is currently down. In the second season from Bayside. There's a left field field for Winsborough. The clock stops, 22 minutes and 12 seconds left to play. 2-0 Tiger lead. I think there's going to be another substitution by the Queensborough Tigers. Yeah. This is the second guy going down and refuses to come up for the Queensborough. Earlier in the game, the Queensborough lost. Fook Lee, Fook Lee out. And now I think one of the a guy goes out. Mm -hmm. well, and now see. this uh, injury timeout gives the Cougars a chance to catch their breaths. That's too bad. Give them a little time to talk about some strategy. Hopefully this isn't too serious. Still isn't up yet. It's not going to be the best. That won't be the best. And tap on Queensborough for them to list in the, mm -hmm. in the midfield there. And this is actually one of the few guys coming in the second season. So if they lost an experience, some guy was used to the system, that would be the best thing for them. A lot of the 22 players on the Queensborough roster, only six of them are returning. and. The injured Hagag is one of them. I think the game is going to go on without him, or... Oh, he's getting back up. Really put the jinx on, Yami. And every time I say, I wonder if Queen Troll will get conservative, they score, so... So, so let's see. Yeah, let's see if they get conservative. Exactly. <laughs> or, that's then he gets up the pitch. Yeah, I don't think he'll come back into the game with only 22 minutes remaining and hopefully he'll be back tomorrow against Bunker Hill, number nine in the country. I think, um, you want to beat full strength for a team like that? You want to be full strength any time. I think number 23, Juan Pinto Franco, 
a central midfielder in his first season. Out of Flushing International, we come in on for him. <coughs> Waiting for the referee to grant the approval of the player to come in. He finally does, and we also see number 17. Mabeo. Mabeo come off the left, um, the left back. But as number eight, as number eight, Edwin Munoz comes in, midfield player from Forest Hills. 22 minutes to go. Now, Cougars trying to speed up the action. The more opportunities there are, a better chance for them. Um, also, the Queensboro um, bring back number three, Steve Erfano. Erfano was one of the returning players. As I said, all sportsmanship team last year in Region 15. He's also the leader of the QCC, of the Queensborough soccer team. Go, go, go. As you Why see, not? doing not with the ball once again. But to trolling by. To train that goes to Queensborough. For Afano, it's going to throw in. Cougars have it. Now 21 minutes to play. I guess the Cougars will go for a goal one in each 10 minute span and then hope for overtime, but they're gonna have to start and that's gonna go out. It was number six, Wilson Burry, who gave chase. Now they're a few times today there have been two balls in play. 20 minutes, 37 seconds left. Wilson Burry. Josiah Cook. Patrick Cronin. It's Cronin. That was a nice shot. Cronin may have played the best all around game for the Cougars in the first half. I'm definitely agree with you. Um, DK is also good in a pretty good shot. Mm -hmm. Certainly has. And free kick to all the Oak Cougars to be taken by. Now under 20 minutes to play. Oh, that, that had a good shot, actually. Yeah, but that was a good shot, better safe. Yeah. And an even better chance at goal, boy. As I said before, Queensboro is actually putting a pretty good, pretty Very good, good defensive defense. show, and it's still two nothing. No, the ball didn't land yet, but I guess offside. Cougars will have it back. 19 minutes, 23 seconds, and counting. Feels like a very quick second half. Feels even faster for the Cougars. That clock looks like it's running. Uh, Slowly, you know, it looks like it's running even faster when you time is running out on you. And of course, for the Tigers, the clock looks like it's running in slow motion. Can't move fast enough before they can celebrate this two nothing game. Dwayne not pass behind the intended target, but got it back. Another injury. Third Wilson. injury. This is in the third injury. It's one of the Tiger. Can't tell who it is from this angle. And that, do you think this has, this is the third injury for a Tiger. Do you think it has anything to do with it being the first game and people getting their first game action or is that just a coincidence? I think it's, it's probably, it's probably, um, I think it's been the first game back because, you know, when you're in the off season, you really don't, play much of come to it, um, um, soccer. You just play with a couple of your friends, you know, jog, get some exercise, work out. Until like you play an extremely um, tedious game for 90 minutes. So I think that adds to it. And also, I think it's been a pretty aggressive game because mm -hmm. um, Oliok is trying to get back in the game. Well, soccer is a surprisingly physical game. 
And you'd be surprised, I mean, some stuff comes out, although this has nothing to do with it, but uh, reports of a lot of concussions come out. Yeah. You know, you'd be surprised, but when a ball's traveling 75 feet in the air and you head it, you're gonna have concussions. Not that this is what that is. Third uh, injury, though. That was um, number 16. Royal Stewart, his first season from John Adams High John School. Adams. As it slowly walks out, um, I wonder how they're going to be tomorrow against Bunker Hill with these uh, three injuries. See who comes back tomorrow, who doesn't. Hopefully, we're able to get some of them back in. But I think um, when it comes to um, Muriel Stewart, I think it's I think it's okay to be able to come back in for tomorrow because it could, it's what is walking out of the fridge. Um, Looks like a lower good. back problem. Yeah, where he's grabbing right now. And number twenty-four, Maximo Juca, back in the game. His first season from William Bryant High School. And Juke is one of those athletes, as I said before. Uh, he ran track, indoor track. And even uh, Riel Stewart, who just got injured, when he was at John Adams High School, a great all-around athlete. Not only was he on the soccer team, but he was also on the swimming team and the cricket team. So, and so I think he probably used to injury, so he'll be able to bounce back and be back tomorrow. Yeah, definitely a gamer. You see athletes like that. Now here. 18 minutes to play. Athletes like that are pretty unique. So you, you, you're gonna, I'm sure we're going to get him back. Or well, he might be back in before the end of the game. So far, we've only seen one, one player carded throughout this game. And that was for a handball. And that was for the and Yeah, definitely for an handball. Now the Cougars are going to be in their, uh, I would say that probably they're all out of attack mode, right? Down by two goals with 17 and a half minutes to go. Um, so Got to going, get it going now. To go in all attack mode, I think Queensborough could take up the team and see if that's just quietly sneak in. But I think it's worth the first it. Two goals. It's worth it for the Cougars, though. Um, I mean, what's the difference between 2 nothing and 3 nothing, or if you can make it 2-1? I would say if you were the Cougars, it would probably, I think the reward would outweigh the risk. I think... I mean, you're down by two, but 17 minutes to go, you can't just, you know, wait for the game to end. And um, free kick goes to um, the Tigers. Tigers. <laughs> free kick to be taken by Dwayne Nutt. You ever in that position that Josiah Cook is in right now, defending the f kick? I mean, he was right in front of that. Header. And safe by Cougar, who's down momentarily, but he's up now. 16 minutes, 15 seconds to go. 2 nothing, Queensboro lead. Goals by Macias and Popal. And seen that time, the Tigers were a little more defensive, right? With uh, three Tigers back in for uh, one Cougar. From one Cougar. I mean, it was only Patrick Cronin there, and there were three Tigers around him, fairly think, deep in the territory. I think actually the Tigers are playing a pretty smart game now. We see them oh, playing they are. safe. They are. They're playing safer compared to before. But now, as they go forward, doing not running. Dwayne goal not against the goalie. And <laughs> goalie kicks it out. I would say you have to. <laughs> Not. See if they could add a third goal and put it out of reach. Cougars aren't going to score three goals in 15 minutes. And now we're under 15 minutes to play. Not. Off the mark.
14.35 to go, first game of the year for the Tigers, a 2-0 lead over the Holyoke Community College Cougars. The two players missed on the header. Slides down. Nice deflection. Cougars just haven't been able to get any good opportunities since uh, late in the first half, really. Um, once again, the Holy Cross Cougars go forward, but Steve Offer no there to take the ball out. Throwing, 13 minutes, 35 seconds to play. Tigers have it. And here's a good chance. Two on one. And nothing comes of it. Number 27 loses it. It's William Lovo who had it, lost it. Good defensive play by the Cougars. I mean, you're one on two, and you make sure the Tigers don't get the shot off. See if they could add a third goal. Dwayne Knott. Can he catch up to it? Dwayne Knott. Knott has been the center of, was been the center of almost every play today. Knott. Presses it in. Edder. Keeps the seat with a chance to go. Yeah, it was a good chance there. And we might have another Tiger down. Hold it up. Hold it up. Another injury. This is number four for the Tigers. Can't tell who this is. Well, he can get up. It's Maximo Juca. Maybe he just lost his breath momentarily. Wind knocked out of him. Not sure. Good crossing by Mama Duke, but there was no one there to get the ball. Under 12 minutes to play. Whistle blown. Juca heads it away. Out of play, 11 and a half minutes to go. Two nothing Tiger lead. Throw in to the early Oak Cougars. As a push forward. Um, but once again, doing not his back, that's defense. Yeah, he's been, he's been outstanding today. Actually, if I was actually choose the best player in the game so far, I would say that kid has been pretty impressive. Um, that's doing that in his first season. 10.53 to go. Tigers have it again. Pushes it forward. Novo. Novo gets the ball, passes it, and played out by the Oleo Cougars. You can see the Oleo Cougars are basically playing it safe now. But why would the Cougars play it safe down by two goals? Um, you could you could say they probably ran on a break, or they probably gave up on the game and just don't want to concede any more goals. Because you're glad to see all the Queensboro Tigers are doing his offense, offense, offense. Well, I mean, if you didn't know the score and you just said the team was down 2 nothing, you would think the Tigers are down from how aggressive they are trying to extend the lead. I mean, you wouldn't even know Holyoke was down by two. It's it's clearly it's clearly a 70-30 possession to the Tigers because basically... If, if even that, this half. So this half, it feels like 80-20 at least for the so Tigers. I mean, those halftime adjustments, I, 
and Seth Kabashi made really paid off. Really, really paid off. They're now nine minutes and 39 seconds away from victory and holding a two goal advantage. Um, once again, Lobo, in the box. Almost, right, almost made a three goal advantage. Again, trying to make it 3 nothing. And that's out. Under nine minutes to go. And Bale back in the game. Crushes it in. Um, and Mark Burke has been around the action, number 14. And here's a chance to make it 3 nothing. Oh! Had a golden opportunity to make it 3 0. That was a nice display of skill by NYD. Oh, it was such a nice pass, too. Just, it's one of those plays where the execution was great on everything except the uh, ending. The delivery. Except the one part where you put the uh, soccer ball in the back of the net. I think, I think you can see the tired legs from some of the PCC Tigers. Mm hmm. But we know we can still see a goal come in or so. Yeah. A goal or two well, come in from the way it's going. We're down to under eight minutes to go. Juke almost lost his footing. Well, he did lose it. He regained it. Ball is out. Um, only Oak Community College. So plan on making a come so plan on making a couple of substitutions and see if they could put some goals in. Oh and that's out. The last time so. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go into the last Under 720 to go. Boy, you can't have that happen. Have we always just kick it out of bounds and give it right back to Queensboro. I guess the one thing Holyoke has working for them, it's two nothing now, and both goals were scored in a thirty eight second span. See, Although not that they did it, but Whistle blown, six fifty three to play. Cooper Marsh heads it. I think you can see a couple of angry players. Yeah, a bit of the frustration Oleo, Cooper, from a bit the of Cougars. frustration. <laughs> a little frustration. Even with the frustration, you still see the QCC Tigers trying to get some more goals in. I think it's. I think it's pretty good. As the game slowly approaches it. And six six more oh five to play. Clock winding down now under six minutes. Two nothing Tigers. The two goals in this game once again, Macias and Popal. And they did it in a thirty eight second span. And now here's a chance to cut the lead in half for the Cougars, and they do it. Hey, don't count them out yet. It's Patrick Cronin with the goal. And we were talking about him all first half, this half saying how he may have been the best player, and then he puts it in. After it's, being silent for a couple of minutes. Hey, still got five on. minutes and 31 seconds to go, and the lead has been cut in half. Well, um, all the only call Will the Cougars tie the game, or will Queensbury Tigers slip away with a close line? You also have to think about that goal that wasn't when it was 2 nothing just five minutes ago, where, where they had a golden opportunity but couldn't put it in the back of the net. 
Now, how do you think the strategy changes now that it's 2-1? I mean, two minutes ago, the body language and the attitude, it seemed like Holyoke was defeated. I think. And now they have all the momentum with this 5-0-8 to play. I mean, what's the strategy for each team here, Yemi? Because Terrell Stewart has it. What does each team have to do here, Yemi? I think the only, um, the only, the only Cougars have to play who are very extremely take all risks possible now. Since they have a goal and they just try to tie the game. And Queensborough goes all out, then just try to get one more in or close it out. So you don't think Queensborough will get conservative? I think it don't get con conservative. They just have to play extremely safe and go for goal because the game could be tied at any time. And you can see, you can see um, all your Cougars coming all out because all your players are forward now. They, play, they, have, they barely have any player back. Right. Cougars are going all out, as they should. I mean, you're down by one goal with four minutes and 13 seconds remaining. There's no reason to <laughs> just wait it out. And I think this is a very clever move by the, by the coach to try to kill some time and bring some players back in. Um, that's coach of the um, Queensborough Tigers. Yep, Zef Kabashi. Nice move. Now down to 4-10. As time slowly winds down. Steph Kabashi and his Tigers soccer team, four minutes and 10 seconds away from an opening day victory. Maybe, and I was also thinking with the injuries, do you think the heat has something to do with it? Um, it's, I think when you play soccer, you really, you really play outdoors, so you're ready to be ready for come rain, come sun. You should be able to play in any condition. And hey, here's it's a chance. One of, it's, one of those, it's one of those sports where, just like football. March. There's a chance. And that was oh, a good save. Nice save. There were two Cougars there. And now a turnover. Almost a turnover. Hey, two minutes. Let's go hard. 3.35 to play. 2-1. Tigers holding on. Stewart. That's up there. Could go either way. Way not. Spin kick. I have a feeling this is going to be a crazy three minutes and ten seconds. Definitely. Because <laughs> you can see the close. Oh, here's a chance to put it out of reach. William Lovo. Lovo. Oh, nice play by the goalie there. Didn't even let Lovo get the shot off. And now Duquette. go and it's out of bounds. Two minutes, 50 seconds to go. Whistle blown. <laughs> Time running down, 2.34. See the Queensborough um, Tigers trying to get themselves backwards to make some defensive plays. As you can see, everybody's going forward for only coming, the only um, only Cougars. Had to clear it, and there's no there's nobody really back for Holyoke. So yeah. they're they're getting aggressive. They're getting aggressive, playing, taking a risk, and have to. And the Queensboro Tigers begin to play it safe as the time winds down. Now with two minutes and three seconds to go, and a whistle is blown. Game comes to an end. No. The game has come to an end, and was there's two oh three showing on the clock. Um, remember, there was a column that was. I think there was time added for the first half, so it dug back from the second half, and we have exactly three minutes and three seconds. So as the game comes to an end, um, the players exchange pleasantries. Um, I think this was a pretty impressive victory by them. Queensborough Tigers, and a pretty good show by um, Olio, um, the Olio Cougars. It was good defensive play, and then you score the two goals in 38 seconds, Macias, and maybe Holyoke was surprised, and they give up another one 38 seconds after. You see, um, we're seeing really good plays from um, Ramdulat Popal today, Momadou Sewene, who had a couple of shots and goal. 
Dwayne Knott played well. Um, Dwayne Knott with a two assist that led to the goal. Edison Macias. Maxim Majuk also had two shots in goal and a couple of pretty impressive plays. As, clock, as the game comes to an end. And the final, the Tigers beat the Cougars 2-1. 2-1. I'm Yami Oshibagum and David Russell.